Welcome to episode 19 of SpaceX in the News. Now today, I only have two things to discuss with you, but I strongly believe what I have to tell you today might be the coolest news you've heard in a while, and I'm really amped about it. First, we're just gonna quickly discuss what's been going down with Crew Dragon since its return from the International Space Station. The second thing I wanna talk to you about is Starhopper and all the exciting stuff that's been going down there in Boca Chica. Let's get started. Okay. So as many of you are already well aware, Crew Dragon recently returned from the International Space Station and splashed down in the Atlantic Ocean just last week. Well, over the weekend, the capsule was delivered to Port Canaveral. The spacecraft is expected to immediately enter into a post-flight analysis and data gathering phase that will quickly transfer into refurbishment to prepare for the capsule's second launch, a critical in-flight abort test that could happen as early as April, according to Elon Musk. However, NASA has been saying it's probably closer to June. but. The Demo-1 flight went so well that there is a slight possibility, not strong, but slight possibility, that the scheduling for launches could be pushed forward. Now, this is the exact opposite of what we're all used to seeing. It's always been delay, delay, delay. And look, I'm not trying to get your hopes up. Again, if I had any money, I would definitely put it on more delays. The one constant when it comes to engineering is change, and unexpected changes tend to slow things down. But that doesn't take away from the fact that things went extremely well on Crew Dragon's previous flight. I mean, just listen to what Benji Reed, the director of Crew Mission management at SpaceX had to say about the mission. Quote, I can't believe how well the whole mission has gone. I think on every point, everything's been nailed all the way along, particularly this last piece. We were all very excited to see re-entry and parachute drug deploy and main deploy splash down. Everything happened just perfectly right on time the way that we expected it to. It was beautiful. And believe it or not, NASA seemed just as positive and excited about the mission as SpaceX. Quoting Steve Stitch or Stike, the commercial crew program deputy manager at NASA, on orbit, we got a lot of great data on the vehicle in terms of thermal performance and power performance. The vehicle really did better than we expected. Then the rendezvous was phenomenal as we came in and checked out those sensors. Today, the undocking, watching how those systems performed, that went flawlessly. It's a very tight sequence between undocking and deorbit burn. How the nose cone performed, how the deorbit burn was executed, then the entry was phenomenal. I don't think we saw really anything in the mission so far, and we gotta do the data reviews, that would preclude us from having the crewed mission later this year. And here's a fun fact that I often wondered. If Crew Dragon's parachutes fail after re-entry into the atmosphere, could they use the Super Draco engine engines as a backup emergency landing procedure. If you remember back several years ago, the idea of retro-propulsively landing the Crew Dragon capsule was the initial method of landing Crew Dragon, ultimately to be nixed due to complications with NASA's oversight, and thus leading to us where we are now with just the exact opposite, the parachutes being the primary, and now maybe the Super Dracos being the backup. And this was just recently asked of Elon, and he said that most likely these Super Draco engines will be programmed to respond in case of an emergency due to parachute deployment failure, but it's contingent upon NASA review and approval. Okay, let's get on to some really exciting news. Now, in case you're not caught up, about a week ago, Starhopper was moved from the construction facility down in Boca Chica to a couple miles up the road to its launch pad, and things have been picking up speed ever since. Last week, Elon tweeted that the second Raptor engine they tested was on its way down to Starhopper from McGregor, Texas, and will be mounted on the vehicle next week. Well, that just happened yesterday. The Raptor was spotted being unloaded at the facilities in Boca Chica, and maybe being mounted on Hopper as we speak. Fuel pipes from the on-site fuel tanks have just been connected to the bottom of Starhopper, and SpaceX's emergency response team has been on standby every day the engineers have been out there. And with good reason, all the necessary fuels and gases are on site, and like the mythical Kraken, Starhopper has been awakened. So last night I was chatting with Boca Chica Maria and she was telling me that she was doing some gardening because she lives right down the road from the launch site. And she said she heard a really loud noise coming from the launch site that only lasted for about one second, but it was enough to disturb her, make her jump, and then run out to the front yard to see exactly what's going on. Could this have been a burp test of the Raptor engine? But that's not all guys. God. I've been sharing a lot of this aerial footage with you from RGV for a while now. And if you've been paying close attention, you might notice something really interesting in these pictures. The two midsections they've been building for Starhopper are getting longer. And I mean a lot longer than the original fairing they were building for the hopper before, you know, it was pushed over and killed by the wind. You can see the first piece stationed in front of the tent and the second piece is hidden behind some containers, probably to protect it from the wind so they wouldn't have a repeat of the first fairing. And you can see in Maria's picture here that they strapped it down just for that reason. And a guy from the online group actually took the time to answer analyze these pictures and measure them out using pixels and then photoshop them into the original Starhopper before it was crushed by the wind. And if what he put together is accurate, this Starhopper 2.0, if you will, is going to be much bigger than the original. <laughs> this is so cool, guys. This is so cool. Now, word on the street, in the hood, 
is that SpaceX will be doing hold down tests this week. And that's really not so much street as it is straight from SpaceX themselves. So I'm gonna take this off now cause it's kind of toasty in here. Yeah, this week we will actually be seeing Starhopper come to life with just one Raptor engine. It's gonna have three eventually, but right now it's just one. Once the other two Raptor engines get here, then this thing will take flight. Now the rumor is that will happen in April, but here's the wishful thinking that it's gonna happen this month. Well, that's all I have for you guys. I hope this excited you as much as it did me. And if it did, go ahead and proudly show your excitement by giving this video a good old liking. And please consider also joining the family and subscribing and hitting that notification bell up, up that way. Because you don't wanna miss an episode, guys. Things are picking up. I think my next video will be Starhopper lighting its engines, and I'll see you then. Thanks so much for watching. Godspeed.